person going in to, to interview with a company, them understanding the strategic objective, what's some things they can bring with them into that interview to help sell themselves as a asset to that company? Just using your example you just talked about. You know, they need to do research on vendors, right? Aerospace, reliable vendors, maybe bring in a portfolio of history, you know, of connections in that industry, or at least know how to find them, right? You know, those type of things. Yeah, well, you definitely, if, if you know the, like going back to, right, if you knew what the company is about, what their strategic objectives are, what are they, what are they really focused on doing? It, you know, if you're, if you're applying for an interview or you're going in an interview, right, you can help bring in materials, like you said, or any kind of supporting evidence that helps supports on how, what you've done in the past actually is relatable experience to that. Right. So like is going it, back to right. Well, I was going to say, is it so much experience or the ability to think through it? Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'd be able to, to think through. And when you, when you do your tactical objectives that you're, you're not just doing stuff blindly and incoherently, you actually have a method to your madness on why you're actually doing what you're doing. Cause you have, and you and I've talked about this in the past where you have a method, you know, when you go to a vendor, you have a certain process that you talk to a vendor and you make sure they hit certain widgets before that you're going to actually give them an opportunity to get a contract. You have a process that you've learned over experience and over time that you can apply to any situation, you know, your military situations, your civilian situations, you know, so, you know, one of the things, but with, especially in a rapidly changing environment, like we're in now, where what I knew yesterday doesn't even apply anymore. Mm -hmm. It's gone. But the fundamentals, the concepts apply. My ability to think, my ability to ask questions, my ability to recognize based on the strategic objectives, does this even matter right now? Right. You know, because if you say I get you, I can get you the best component at the cheapest price, you're like, well, I don't need you. I'm looking for. Yeah. I need now. Do you have it? Well, it's going to take a while for me to build it, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get it for at least six months. Okay. I'm going to keep that in mind, but I got to find one that can get it to me in four months or three months or whatever That's that right. number is. So when you look at your, your book, going back to your book, why, what chapter in your book specifically does someone need to read to understand what we're talking about now? Supply chain strategic objective analysis. You know, so once they buy your book, they want to go in and, and, go specifically to this chapter to understand strategic objectives so they can start to apply this either in their job or their next job interview. Well, so actually even just the first part, the first chapter is really important. So I break it down from strategic, tactical, and then how to maintain your suppliers. So chapter one is, is really focused on developing the, your strategic objectives. Uh, there's one of the key things, not to give away all my secrets, but one of the I use one of the acronyms from the military that we use during strategic planning, which is called PMSI PT, right? And you got to go to the book. To yeah, that's right. Book. I'm say, no, we're not going to explain that today. You yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> you know, there's for example, just some little pieces of, right, you look at like the political aspects, you look at some of the military, social economic standpoints of it in order to develop your strategy for your supply chain. While you're analyzing your supply chain, having a strategy with your analysis, right? So right. what are the things that you, you need to be looking at in your supply chain? So you can, if you don't know what you're looking for, or what your strategic objective of your company is, you, know, you won't know exactly what to analyze and authority look for in your supply chain, what to look for in suppliers. But with your, you now people can get a free chapter of your book. Is that right? Yep, Where would they go? Say what? And that's the first chapter. <laughs> right, and so, so they can get this for free. They don't need to buy the book right now. They can just opt in to get a taste of what the whole book's about. Where would they go to get that for free? Go to hnap.com. That's H, right. H as in hotel, K-N-A-P-P, -P, my last name, K-N-A-P-P.com. You can so go there phonetically can... military wise. You got it. Hotel Kilo November Alpha Papa Papa dot com. Oh, right. Dot com. Yeah. How you do alpha dot com and military dot com. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some other things they're going to find when they go after they get the first chapter and, they, and then they decide to invest in your book a little bit? What are some other things they're going to find? Well, that's the second part, right? You can also look at the strategic uh, development processes while I go over even more in depth, like where, for example, what to look at the specific supplier, what is their capacity, what's their quality rating, uh, what, what are they good at and, and stuff like that. So we'll also go over that. Uh, other, another chapter too goes over how to make sure that you have the optimal amount of suppliers in your supply base, not too much, too, not, 
to not too little in resilience. I think that's become really important now, especially in this day and age, having redundancies, redundancies in suppliers, redundancies in your supply chain. Uh, Cause we've really learned that resilience, right? It may cost more, but it's definitely worth it. Now, a lot of these people or supplier or companies that were, you know, more focused on making sure we have a good supplier, that's the cheapest. And then we give them all our volume. I think they're really learning a lot about the importance of having supply chain resilience. And then in the last chapter, I, I do go over in the fourth chapter, I also go over how to maintain that supply chain, right? Even if you go through the analysis and you do it once, it's it's a continuous, it's a continual thing, right? Your supply chain is a living and breathing thing. It feels like it always needs to be adjusted. What, for example, every month now things are changing, right? So, you know, from, from January to now, things are totally different from what they used to be. Right. So being able to go through your supply chain, whatever frequency you choose, you, you can definitely go through it again and, and repeatable process, repeat that process and continue to refine and readjust your supply chain.